Hey guys, welcome to Action Reaction. So make sure to subscribe and like to my channel. TV show trailers, YouTube videos, gaming compilation videos, regular uploads. You'll see a lot of content. So let's get to the reactions. Let's go. He's whizzing and boomsticking. I do and it's our job to analyze their weapons with armor and skill. Find out who would win. A death battle. shows Earth one's greatest hero. Alongside the Guardians of the Grove, he protected the world from all manner of threats. And then, in a single day, it all went horribly wrong. Yummy man. Yummy man. Who yummy man? Who indeed? So I don't Champion know, of I Earth, best-selling author, J.K. Simmons, and it was all a charade, with his murderous rampage only brought to a halt thanks to his own son. It all starts with his whole planet, Mildrum, which out here is a totally lovely utopia. Through brutal, mortal combat, we like to have a that came later. Mildrumites are among the most powerful beings in the universe, even more so after they purged the weaker members of their species as the vanguard of the Mildrumite Empire. Omni-Man infiltrated Earth as Nolan Grayson, expected to prepare the planet for Imperial assimilation. Which should have been easy, since he's got your classic strongman superpowers and he's basically invulnerable, easily knocking around asteroids the size of Texas. He can fly at unbelievable speeds, soaring from Earth to the planet Thraxa in under one week. Thraxa is, quote, a couple galaxies away, give or take, so a minimum of two galaxies. Beyond the Milky Way's neighbor Andromeda is the lesser-known Triangulum Galaxy, which is over 2.7 million light-years away. Reaching it under one week means all men must have flown over 142 million times faster than light. Oh, and Wiltermites can't breathe in space, so he held his breath the whole way. And it's not like he was in a rush. He was on a soul-searching trip, contemplating the significance of smashing his own son's face in. Yeah, this is why I'm never having kids. You're missing out, but According to another Vildramite, Thetis, a bunch of other Vildramites who actually were in a hurry, moved to Vildram across the Virgo supercluster in less than 24 hours. That's over 20 billion times faster than light. You don't really need to rush anyway. The older a Vildramite gets, the slower they age. According to the Invincible Handbook, Nolan is over 2,000 years old. And regardless of age, Vildramites don't suffer muscle fatigue like humans do, so they rarely ever tire out. Seriously? He's got parenting easy mode on, and he couldn't even handle that. I would have killed for that back when my daughter was born. Well, you would have to be a Vildramite first. A Vildramite's body contains smart atoms, which they subconsciously manipulate. This cellular structure can effectively recall certain states of being regardless of their present environment, reacting to changes at an atomic level to perform the impossible. Yeah, like surviving your intestines. Getting ripped out, or even more scary, ripping out your whole beard all at once! <laughs> Nolan is incredibly tough, but as he faces superior forces, his smart atoms can adjust to make him even stronger by comparison. This is why Viltrumites are considered invincible. Most weapons in the universe can't even scratch a Viltrumite like him. Even a ship's cannon like this one can't take down a Viltrumite, and it obliterated a massive solar disk nearly half the size of a star. Speaking of planets, he's strong enough to shatter one by flying. Through it. A planet is so big it has a whole ring around it. The Roche limit factor dictates the size a celestial body must be in order to disperse orbiting material as a ring. In short, an Earth-sized planet can't support such a ring, meaning this one must be much larger. And don't get me started on how the ring is actually made up of dead bodies because, uh, oh. spoilers! Just go read the comic. If Roche is a this planet also supports five moons in its orbit, and even the smallest is a perfect sphere, meaning its own gravity shape. At minimum, a moon like that must have a diameter of 600 kilometers, or 370 miles. Comparing this to the planet's diameter, we can tell this world is nearly 14 times larger than Earth. Or it was before, you know, kablam. Now, Omni-Man does have his weaknesses. Monsters like Rog 
Ragnars can pierce both of my flesh, and he's extremely sensitive to a specific high pitch frequency, which can destabilize his body's equilibrium. But his real weakness turned out to be a against him for fatherhood. Thanks to his son Mars, Poli began to re examine his perspective and his place in the universe. He settled down in a new place, got himself a new job, even had a new kid with his new wife. Who's a bug? A bug lady! He banged a bug. Why? Omni Man? How? Omni Man? Hey, everyone deals with parenting stress in their own way. When Nolan was lecturing to Mark about how insignificant people are, Mark wasn't the only one he was trying to convince. If you catch my drift. Nolan Grayson's real mission isn't planetary conquest or saving the innocent. It's to discover if a violent man who can break the world can also be a good father. God speed, Omni Man. In the far reaches of the cosmos, laid a world with a people like no other, born and raised to do just one thing. Proud warrior people from the planet Vegeta, ruled by uh, King Vegeta, a narcissist punch. Exactly. <laughs> their pride blinded them to the truth of their impending doom. But perhaps one saying represented the best of them, even during their waning glory days. Bardock! He's cool, he's crude, he's got a bad attitude, and if he goes in shit, you're totally screwed! And, and guess what? Father of Goku! Oh, wow. <laughs> so what does that make Turles? Who? <clears throat> Bardock was a cold-blooded killer, ruthlessly conquering planets in service of the Saiyan's true overseer, Lord Frieza. They didn't just conquer planets, they wiped out every living thing, leaving Frieza an inhabited rock to sell away. Bardock was an asshole. Until he wasn't. Bardock's story has evolved over the years, with multiple iterations to draw from, including one where he's a brilliant scientist. <laughs> but only one is considered officially canon. Bardock's demeanor began to shift when he met and eventually married fellow warrior Kine, and had two sons, Raditz and Kaka. No, Bardock didn't go totally soft. He was still a ruthless warrior. You know that iconic red headband of his? It's stained with the blood of his fallen. And was naturally adept in using his key as an explosive weapon, aka shooting lasers from his hand. True to his brutal, screw you nature, Bardock's moves are all about will and power. His final spirit cannon is like a good powered bazooka. His rebellion to ever punch ignites enemies on contact, and his rebellion spear basically turns him into a supercharged battering ram. The guy has no chill. He will run you over, break your spine, light you on fire, and then move on to the next guy. All in a day's work for a Saiyan. Marriage didn't change that. While Bardock cared for Gine, in fact being one of few Saiyans of his time to actually have a romantic partner, he was still no family man. Like most Saiyans, he saw his sons as nothing more than future soldiers. Bardock was a low-class warrior, so it was unlikely his kids would grow up to be anything more than battlefield fodder. But they would still possess the Saiyan's power, a transformation that was the key to their planetary devastation. Big Boogie! Under the light of a full moon, a Saiyan with a tail manifests the Uzara. This great ape form increases Bardock's power tenfold, turning him into an unstoppable kaiju. Quick, someone call Yajirobe! While some Saiyans can maintain control over this berserker form, low-class warriors like Bardock don't receive the same level of training as those of higher birth. Prince Vegeta's control is so precise he can speak all change, but Bardock cannot. Hell, it's questionable if he even remembers everything that happens when he goes full tilt gorilla. The Saiyan strategy is pretty much just monkey see, monkey smash. Despite being low class, Bardock's power level nearly matched that of King Vegeta, who could destroy multiple planets at once. At about this time, King Vegeta's power level was around 10,000. Yeah, we know power levels are kind of janky. Nobody can agree on what the number really means. Outside of his fight with Gas, Bardock doesn't really show any high end feats in canon. But we can use power levels to compare him to other characters with similar levels to better understand his potential. Like when his son fought Prince Vegeta. What's the scouter say about his power level? It's over! 8,000! Yeah, the dub changed it to 
Goku and Vegeta's lip flaps, but we only cover the cold heart's truth, dammit! According to this movie pamphlet, Goku's power level between his fight with Vegeta and his trip to Namek was 10,000. This lines up with that previous reading and puts him on par with Barbie. Goku's training during the trip eventually raised him to 90,000 upon arrival, but this gives us a clear window. Yeah, early in the trip, he had to dodge a bunch of incoming asteroids and blast his ship away from a star, which is impressive considering the speed involved. The planet Namek is outside Earth's quadrant of the universe, and it took his ship six days to make the journey. Traveling a quarter of the universe's diameter would put the ship over 9.5 trillion times the speed of light. Oh, and Goku would have had to keep up with that kind of speed to do all that other stuff. Makes sense given far weaker characters to reach the moon in a fraction of a second. Should be trivial enough for Bardock. All this speed and power meant when Bardock and his team assaulted the planet Serial, they went Serial! Bardock ravaged the planet, annihilating its people until he found two survivors, a mother and her child. Some may call it weakness, others a moment of clarity, but Bardock was suddenly reminded of his wife and recently born son. He chose to spare the two, and even pushed himself far past his limits to protect them from his own Frieza Force allies, who taunted that Frieza had dire plans for the Saiyan's future. This moment changed Bardock, making him more appreciative of his family and cautious of Frieza. When all the Saiyans were called back to planet Vegeta for mysterious reasons. He had a hunch something was up, so before his final stand, smashing through hundreds of soldiers before coming face to face with the tyrant, he sent his youngest kid away for protection, a choice that allowed his son to thrive. And hey, that's what good parents do. A choice that would have a greater significance than Bardock could ever imagine. And then Dildo Dickhead blew them all up when he died. Or did he? Bardock got killed so freaking hard he got blasted back in time. Actually, he was pulled away by these two who miscalculated and misplaced him incorrectly in the time stream. Blah, 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 John Cannon, whatever, he survived. And when he realized what happened, he got so unbelievably pissed off. You went Super Saiyan! What? Alright, this is very much an alternate universe what if scenario, and it is jarring. But think about it. The Super Saiyan form is not achieved through training alone. It requires dedication, introspection, victory, failure, love, and loss. Frieza destroyed the Saiyans because he feared the possibility of the Super Saiyan. A Saiyan with power that could rival his own. But perhaps Bardock's transformation was more than simply a what if. He had begun to take the very steps his son later would to achieve the form. Perhaps if Frieza had hesitated, even for a moment, his fear would have manifested before him, right then and there. Damn, pour one out for Bardock, who figured out how to be the truest Saiyan right at the end of it all. I know Rock and Rock would be proud. All right, the combatants are set. We run the data for all possibilities. Another gross bug planet.
I won't let you take me from my wall! Invincible involves the coalition of planets admitting that their weapons cannot hurt Viltrumites. So, when their ships can and obliterated this gigantic solar disk and you highlighted just how tough the Viltrumites really are, this disk completely blocked the sunlight and heat between the planet and its star. And this is no ordinary planet. Its size and density are so high that its inhabitants are as strong as Viltrumites just due to living in its natural gravity. To fully block the light to such a planet and remain in consistent orbit, the disk would need to be positioned at its L1 point, the spot that creates an uninterrupted view between the sun and satellite. And the disk itself must be about half the diameter of the star. This means the scaling of the disk is at 3 septillion times. Which makes Omnipotent over 11,000 times stronger than base part of Not even the great or Super Saiyan forms could make up that difference. So the screen goes to no less. Still, numbers aren't everything. As far as you are still in the neither have one distinct advantage that could have been out of the man survives in space for much longer. But Sparta barely squeaks out the edge here thanks to his ranged versatility with key attacks and, of course, Super Saiyan. Okay, let's address the Super Saiyan part of It's perfectly fair to question whether or not the form should be in this comparison at all. However, even with the form included, Nolan still takes this, especially when it comes to our last two categories, experience and stamina. And without that mastery, the form drains the user's energies at an increased rate. Which brings us to what may be Omni-Man's most surprising advances. Those weird smart atoms! Saiyans like Bardock can fight for days on end, but only for so long. Bardock possesses a limited pool of ki, which only depletes faster when using super forms like the Great Eight. In contrast, Omni-Man's biology prevents him from tiring in most cases, letting him travel across whole galaxies for weeks non-stop. And his smart atoms adjust to counter whatever physical strain he's subjected to. Bardock's crazy speed and power made him a real gem! Nolan's strength, experience, and sheer endurance presented an unstoppable and unshakable force that would inevitably land the killing blow. When push came to show, Omni Man raised the power! The winner is Omni Man. Next time on this Subscribe and join us as we go to see more death marks. Thanks for watching.